What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Let's quickly speak about Elden Ring Night Rain, optimizing for the best performance and fixing any stuttering issues. Before we get into it, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, 11, NVIDIA, and related optimization guides to get even more out of your system. That being said, there is one particular Windows trick I'll be touching on near the end of this video, which has helped quite a few people fixing his stuttering. We'll cover the in-game graphics options in just a moment, but for now, keep in mind that places like Nexus mods exist, with mods like Performance Boosting for Potato PC, where we get extra graphics options which we don't usually have, like disabling Shadows, Grass, or both to get even more performance if you're not reaching the in-game FPS cap of 60. You'll find a link to this down below, or at least Nexus mods where you can look for similar mods, but keep in mind these do turn off some very obvious graphic settings, lowering the quality of your game quite a bit compared to the original even on lowest settings. If you need extra performance, this is probably where I'd go if everything's all the way down on the minimum anyways. Also, also, if you have a better performing PC and you're stuck at the FPS cap of 60 FPS, currently there is an Unlock the FPS DLL mod on Nexus mods for Night Rain, but from what I see in the posts, it's a little bit broken at the time. You'll also find this somewhere down below. You can head across to the posts tab over here and read about it, though I think we'll just need to wait around for a bit for a more reliable FPS uncapping mod. So if you really want more than 60 FPS, you'll need to use something like lossless scaling. Linked below, lossless scaling is a simple program where you can enable frame generation for any game, scaling, using lossless scaling's algorithms, FSR, or a bunch of other ones, though I'd recommend sticking to these top two, and the latest frame generation like LSFG3 is actually a really good performing frame generation. The frame generation isn't perfect, obviously DLSS and FSR have access to the game. This program basically just records your monitor and plays it back full screen with these extra modifications applied. So it doesn't actually mess with the game at all, and it should be safe to play with the game online, whether it's particularly Night Rain or any other game for that matter. It's a cool thing to look into, but of course it's not perfect. And of course, Lost in the Scaling is paid. There are free alternatives as well. With that out of the way, let's speak about the in-game graphics options and a particular Windows fix at the end. From the main menu, head across to System, followed by Graphics down here. I'd recommend playing the game in full screen mode for the best input latency and FPS, but on most modern systems, and especially now as there's a certain issue with stuttering and things like that, playing borderless windowed may give you better performance. You'll need to try full screen and borderless windowed to see which one works better for you. If you're using lossless scaling, I'm pretty sure you need to play borderless windowed anyway. Resolution should match your display, and then we have quality settings. This is simply just a preset selector. You can start with anything. If you have a really low powered system, start on low and work your way up. I'll be doing that just so we can maximize FPS, and I'll show you a few freebie options we can raise for some better quality. Then, down to advanced settings, everything should be applied in here. Let's quickly run through them. At the very top, texture quality, this completely depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has between low and max. You might see a small FPS drop, but for the quality increase, this is probably the most powerful option here. If you're just barely meeting the minimum specs, set it to low, so that's somewhere around a 3 gig graphics card. If you've got about 4 gigs, set it to medium, somewhere around 6, high, and anything above that, you can set this to maximum for a pretty big increase in quality with very little performance impact. And the alias thing, unfortunately, was stuck with TAA, unless you use mods to add DLSS, FSR, and things like that, which will probably be coming in the next few weeks. Or, of course, you use something like lossless scaling. Here, we can only change between off, low, and high. You'll see about a 7-10% to decrease in performance between off and high. However, if you want to get rid of jagged edges, pretty much just stick to high and that's that. Otherwise, play off, especially if you're going to be using lossless scaling. SSAO has a very minimal impact on performance, you can probably leave this on max, if not high, on pretty much all setups. Depth of field, performance-wise, you shouldn't see too much of an impact here, as it mainly only applies in cutscenes. Off is no depth of field, low, medium, high, and maximum only change how blurry the background is, so if you're going to be using depth of field, you can probably keep this on high or maximum, as again, it only applies during cutscenes, which shouldn't matter that much. If you need extra performance there, keep it on low, if not off. Then motion blur this option, we get off, low, medium, and high, this is purely just a preference thing, there should be almost no impact here. If you want motion blur, leave it on high for the best quality motion blur, or off for no motion blur, which is how I'll be playing this game. Shadow quality has a pretty big impact on how the game looks. Low, shadows are super blocky, medium, 
they probably look their best for performance. High keeps you somewhere around the same performance with similar looking shadows and maximum does lead to a performance drop in most systems. Leave this on medium for the best looking shadows if you can. Then lighting quality. Low gives you the highest performance, but the differences between medium, high and maximum are very small FPS wise. Basically, the higher this option is, the better you can see in indoor areas, dark areas, things like that, as it affects the distance to which light sources cast light onto the surrounding areas. For this reason, I'll probably leave it on high, but if you see a big performance drop, you'll need to lower this. Then effects quality. Medium is where I would leave this, but low should give you a small performance boost. Cranking it up doesn't really gain you anything extra quality wise. It's more just taking away some extra performance. Volumetric lighting is a very expensive option. Keeping it on low gives you the best performance, but casted lights in foggy areas may look a bit pixelated and blurry. For that reason, medium is probably the best here. However, again, every step you go up costs quite a bit FPS wise. Reflection quality. There are few locations where you'll actually see reflections, and when you actually do, performance wise, there's not too much of a difference between these. I'll probably leave this on high for good looking reflections with almost no FPS impact. Water surface quality changes how you interact with water, so it's the ripples when you run around and things like that. Low is off, high is on, and I'm pretty sure it's more of a CPU focused effect, so having it on high shouldn't really cost any FPS, but it should definitely increase your immersion. Shader quality affects how water interacts with rocks and things like that. It's a very subtle effect, but it does cost quite a bit performance-wise. Leaving this on low leaves you with more flat rivers and waterfalls. However, cranking it up to high can cost you as much as 7-8% to 8 of your FPS. I'll leave this on probably low. Then global illumination, very small impact on performance. I'd recommend leaving it on high anyways. And finally, grass quality is the distance at which you see higher quality grass closer to you. Each step you go up will cost you more performance. I'd pretty much recommend leaving this on the lowest option of medium, and that's that. Now that we've covered all of the in-game options, you should have improved performance if you were playing on high or medium, and obviously if you're playing on low, there's only a few things you can actually raise, but we haven't actually addressed stuttering and things like that. For stuttering, I'd recommend quitting the game and finding Night Rain in your Steam library. Right-click it, choose Properties, and on the General tab, you'll find Launch Options. Here, you can try hyphen DX11 to see if you get better stability on your system, but it's a hit or miss option. If it doesn't help you, just come back here and remove it. Something that does help on most systems, and I've heard really good things about, is unparking your CPU cores. Usually, cores are parked for less power usage, things like that. A very popular fix for stuttering in Elden Ring, as well as many other games for that matter, is to unpark your CPU use. In the description down below, you'll find Park Control, a completely free program to unpark your CPU cores. Just download this and open the installer once it's done. I'll simply click through this and when it's done, it should automatically launch. You'll see something like this. If inside of here, you don't already see Bitsum Highest Performance, simply look down here where it says Bitsum Highest Performance, uninstalled and choose Install. This will add the brand new option to your Windows Power Options and we can choose it from the drop down here. So there we go, Bitsum Highest Performance performance I'll select it and then choose make active. This should completely disable CPU parking. Mine was at about 4% and now we should get way better performance out of our system pretty much everywhere, especially in games. That's it. All of your cores should now be unparked. It'll use more power, generate a little bit more heat, but we do get much better performance out of it. Once you've set this power plan, it's enabled in Windows and you don't really need to interact with this program anymore. You can choose settings followed by unchecking start at login just to make sure your system boot up is a little bit faster as we don't need this starting every time our system does. Setting it here, set it in Windows so it's pretty much done. Anyways, that's really that. If you wish, you can choose to enable the dynamic boost, which will change to the highest performance plan when your system's in use and lower it when you're not gaming and things like that, which may decrease power usage as again, we're using more of our CPU more of the time, but that's optional and I think you'll need this program running anyways. Hit OK and we're done here. Enjoy Elden Ring, hopefully now with fewer stutters and better performance. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.